So some of you may recognize this flag. For those that don't, this is the flag that earned my city the distinction of having the worst city flag in North America. <laughs> but why is it such a bad flag? Well, it violates almost all the principles of good flag design. Now, I'm willing to bet that most everyone here didn't even know there were rules to flag design. And honestly, I didn't even know they existed until just a couple of years ago. So flag experts have a name. They are called vexillologists, and they've put together the five basic principles for flag design. The five basic rules of flag design, according to the North American Vexillological Association, are <laughs> number one, keep it simple. <laughs> Not simple by flag standards. Number two, use meaningful symbolism. So what they're getting at here is that the colors and patterns and shapes need to relate to what it symbolizes. It's obvious we're proud. <laughs> Number three, use two to three basic colors. Save you the time, there are five. Number four, no lettering or seals. Don't think I need to explain this one. And number five, be distinctive or be related. Well, truly, I think this is the only one we had going for us after a failed design contest. Well, back in 2015, in a TED Talk on why city flags may be the worst design thing you've never noticed, uh, podcaster and radio host Roman Mars beautifully lays out the case for good flag design and why every community deserves to have an awesome flag flying over it. Now, the line that has stuck with me has always been that a great city flag is something that represents a city to its people and its people to the world at large. Now, we'll get back to that thought in just a minute. Well, a little while later in his talk, he says my city has the worst city flag in North America. Well, here's the thing about that flag. That flag was never meant to be a flag. It was designed as a logo. From there, someone had the not so good but very well-intentioned idea of running it up the flagpole. <laughs> so, now, the design is still in use in a few places today, so when that logo's been used properly, it has had some staying power in our community. Well, back to Roman putting us on blast for having the worst flag on the continent. There was some local residents who saw that TED Talk and said this cannot stand and approached the city about doing something about it. So in the spring, uh, spring of 2016, we formed the Flag Design Ad Hoc Committee with one mission and one mission only, raise a new flag for Pocatello. Roman Mars even attended our very first meeting to give us some advice and as well as some uh, encouragement. So we got started and immediately a couple of questions rose to the surface. What are you going to replace the flag with, and how are you going to replace it? We kicked around a ton of different ideas. One was to hire a professional designer to design us a flag. Well, that was a no-go because we had a budget of zero. <laughs> the other was to allow anyone and everyone uh, to, desi to design a flag. Now, the idea that stuck was one that was in the middle. We'd allow anyone and everyone to submit a design, and then we'd utilize the professional creative minds in our community to refine those designs. We would open it up to the world because we wanted anyone with any level of connection to Pocatello to have a chance to help us out in the process. So here we're thinking everyone from the lifelong resident to the Idaho State University alumni, to the person who lived here at one point or another in their career but since moved on, down to the people who only know about us by what they've read on the internet. So our first step was education. We went out into the community and began to uh, educate them on why Pocatello needed a new flag and also explain to them those rules of good flag design. I can't tell you how many people told me during this time that the flag for Pocatello absolutely positively must say Pocatello on it. So in the fall, we began to receive submissions. And in addition to asking for a design, we asked our artists to provide us with a paragraph explaining the symbolism behind the design. 
We opened it up to social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit, and for the most part, social media embraced us right back. When we were done, we had 709 designs from 26 different countries and 31 different US states. Now, some of these designs, they took a part of our history very, very literally. <laughs> now, to clarify, we were named the uh, US Smile Capital by the American Bankers Association back in the 1980s. <laughs> and na na naturally, since we put the call out on the internet, there were some folks who didn't even take us seriously at all. <laughs> really? Come on, man. <laughs> still, still. But all in all, when people genuinely thought about it, even if they didn't use those rules a good flag design, they let us know exactly what Pocatello means to them. So for this local teenager, they were letting us know, or let, they were symbolizing the beauty of the valley we call home through the use of a sunset. This professional designer wanted to highlight our distinction as the gate city, as well as symbolize the Portneuf Gap and the Portneuf River. This child very literally wanted to show our connection to Idaho State University. This group of designers out of Utah, they wanted to show our connection to the railroad through railroad spikes. This person wanted to symbolize a bright and prosperous future for Pocatello through the use of a star. And this kid from New Hampshire let us know what they know about our community through the use of mountains, the railroad, and the sun. So now we've got all these flags, and this is where part two of our process kicks in. We gathered a group of experts on art, history, design, advertising, marketing, and of course, vexillology, and they began to winnow out. It's a tough word, I know. <laughs> so this group of experts, they began to winnow out the strongest designs and their best elements. At the same time they're going about their efforts, the public had a chance to offer their feedback on the flags. We asked them to pick three, let us know what they like, uh, or what they liked about the flag, what, if anything, they may want to change, and how that flag represented Pocatello. For one person, this was all that they wanted to see in a submission through its use of the mountains, the river, and the stars. Another said this flag sent a cheerful message. And someone remarked that this flag was a great flag through using orange for Idaho State University, blue for the Portneuf River, and using other elements to symbolize the mountains, the railroad, and the Native American culture in the area. Now, you remember Roman's comment about a great city flag being something that represents a city to its people and its people to the world at large? Through the comments we're receiving, we're beginning to look right into the heart of our city. So we've got all these flags, and now we've got all these comments. And this is where that group of experts completed a near Herculean task. They took the best designs, they took the strongest design elements, they took the feedback from the public, mixed it all together, and produced six strong designs that were then presented back to the public for another round of feedback. And it's here we get to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the heart and soul of our community. One person said they liked how this flag showed all paths coming together. Several mentioned how they liked how this flag uh, had ties to the American flag through the use of red, white, and blue. One person who's lived here for near, in Pocatello for nearly 30 years said they've liked how this showed the area's natural beauty, its history, and its human capital. And just like before, we opened this thing up to the world. Someone from Turin, Italy, liked the uniqueness of this flag. And one person said, or from Kansas City, Missouri, they said that this flag is simple, eye-catching, and beautiful. Now, I would be lying to you if I told you that this whole thing was all sunshine and roses. We did get some negative feedback. One person said the idea of a city flag is ridiculous and very rhetorically asked us if we had anything better to do with our time and our effort and our money. <laughs> Another said the flags I just showed you uh, were a disgrace to their hometown 
and very snidely asked if we just used a bunch of colored blocks to design the flag. But all in all, when people gave us honest feedback on the flags, they were letting us know exactly what they like, dislike, and hold dear about Pocatello. So now it's on the ad hoc committee. We need to make a recommendation. And over the course of two grueling and sometimes very heated meetings, we made the decision to recommend the design known as Mountains Left to the, to the city council. Thanks. Much better. So here is that design we recommended to the council. As we were going over the symbolism with the members of the council, they began to see how this flag represents the people of Pocatello. So what does this flag stand for? It tells us that Pocatellans love the mountains that they call home, that we value the synergy between industry, education, and recreation that we're happy to be known as the gateway to the Northwest and our distinction as a hub for rail, air, and road. We value agriculture and the Native American culture in the area. We're proud of our past, our present, and we look with hope towards our future. Well, on July 20th, 2017, the Pocatello City Council voted and Pocatello got its new flag. Yeah, there we go. Now sure, not everyone loves the flag, but most people really do like it, and so far the response has been pretty positive. When people have seen it, they say, oh cool, that's the new flag, right? And now we're looking forward to the North American Vexillological Association's next batch of city flag rankings. <laughs> we think we're going from worst to first, but no, ma no matter what, we now have a flag that we're proud of. <laughs> 